In this problem, we have a rocket that's going to be launched from the ground. It burns fuel for 3.61 seconds and has an upward acceleration of 29.1 meters per second squared. And then it runs out of fuel after 3.61 seconds. And so since it's moving upwards, it's going to continue upwards, go up, reach a highest point, and come back down. And so this is a problem that we're going to break into two different pieces. We're going to have the piece where it's accelerating upwards while it's burning fuel. And then the second piece to its motion is going to be an object in free fall. The only force acting is the force of gravity. The force of gravity is going to cause it to have a downward acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And so we're going to use that to find the maximum height that the rocket reaches and the total time that the rocket is in the air. To do this problem, as we break it up into two pieces, the ending position and velocity from the first piece will become the beginning position and velocity for the second piece. So for the motion of this rocket, we have it launching upwards and burning fuel for 3.61 seconds. It reaches some height at that time. It stops burning fuel. We'll find the height at that point when it stops burning fuel. We'll find the velocity at that point when it stops burning fuel. But then it's going to continue upwards, reach the highest point, and then start coming back down. So the first part is when it's burning fuel and it has an upward acceleration of 29.1 meters per second squared. So we're going to go through, we're going to set up our table of data for the kinematic equations with the starting and ending positions, the starting and ending velocities, the acceleration, and the time. So the rocket's starting at the ground, the initial height is zero. We're told that it starts from rest, so the initial velocity is zero. And we're told that it has an upward acceleration of 29.1 meters per second squared. We know that it has that acceleration for 3.61 seconds. And so we need to calculate the position and the velocity at 3.61 seconds. First, to calculate the velocity at the end of 3.61 seconds, we use the equation that relates velocity and time. So putting in our initial velocity, acceleration, and time, we're able to calculate that the velocity at 3.61 seconds is 105.05 meters per second. This velocity at the end of the first part is going to get used as our initial velocity for the second part. But before we move on to the second part, we need to find the height at 3.61 seconds. So to do that, we use the equation that relates the position and time. Plugging in our values of the initial height, the initial velocity, the acceleration, and the time, we calculate that the height at 3.61 seconds is 189.617 meters. So as we move on to part two, that's going to be the starting height for part two. So as I start part two, I need to make another table for my data. Again, we kind of treat this as two separate problems. We had the first problem that was acting for 3.61 seconds. It had one acceleration. This is a separate problem. It is in free fall, and, but we use the information that we calculated from the first part to fill in our initial height and our initial velocity. At the end of part one, it was at a height of 189.617 meters. So for part two, it starts at a height of 189.617 meters. At the end of part one, the velocity was 105.05 meters per second. So at the beginning of part two, the velocity is 105.05 meters per second. But for the second part, it stopped burning fuel, so it's just in free fall. So the acceleration for something in free fall is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And so for part A, what we're trying to do is we're trying to calculate the maximum height above the ground. At the maximum height, the velocity is zero. So what we're trying to find is what is the height of the rocket when the velocity equals zero. So to solve this, I can use the equation that relates the velocity and the position. My velocity v is zero meters per second. My initial velocity was 105.05 meters per second. My acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And I need to make sure that I plug in my starting height of 189.617 meters. And so simplifying this a little bit, we get that zero equals 11,035.71 minus 19.6 times the quantity y minus 189.6. So then taking the 11,035.71 to the left side of the equal sign, it becomes negative. Dividing both sides by negative 19.6, 
I get 563.047 equals y minus 189.6. Again, you would also be able to distribute the 19.6 through. I find it easier to just simplify it down and divide both sides by that first. And so then if I add 189.6, I get that my final height is 752.647 meters. So this is the maximum height that the rocket reaches above the ground. Again, we took into account that 189 meters that it traveled in the first part by including that as the starting height for the second part. And so it went up an additional 563 meters in the second part. It was already at a height of 189.6 meters so that it reached a final height of 752.647 meters. Part B of the question says, what is the total time that the rocket is in the air? And the important thing with this is we're measuring it from when it's launched. So what we're going to do for this is we're going to calculate the time that it takes for the second part. How much time does it take to go from a height of 189.617 meters, moving upwards, going up to that maximum height, coming back down, reaching the ground. But then we have to remember that we need to include the 3.61 seconds from the beginning. So I'm going to look for what is the time when the final height is zero. To do that, I'm going to look at the equation that relates the position and the time. And I plug in my ending height is zero, my starting height is 189.617, my initial velocity is 105.05 meters per second, my acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and I'm going to solve for t. Again, all we're doing here is we're looking at the total time that it takes in part two for it to go up and come back down. And so if we simplify this, we get a quadratic equation that we can solve using the quadratic formula. If we solve this, this gives us two answers. One of them is t equals negative 1.674 seconds. That's obviously not the correct answer because that means that it reaches the ground 1.67 seconds before part two started. So then our other solution is that t equals 23.113 seconds. Now this is not our final answer to part B because we need to remember that that's just the time for part two. And so we need to include in the 3.61 seconds from part one. So our total time that the rocket is in the air measured from when it is launched is 26.723 seconds. So again, for a problem like this, you're able to break it into two separate pieces. One piece had an upward acceleration of 29.1 meters per second squared. The other piece, it was free fall, so it had an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. To link the two things together, the position and velocity from the end of the first piece become the position and velocity at the start of the second piece. And so then in solving this part, to find the total time that it was in the air, we looked at part two, we found the total time that part two took for it to go from a height of 189.6 meters all the way to the ground. But then we also included the 3.61 seconds from the first part. This gives us our total time of 26.723 seconds. Often when you get these types of problems that are a little bit more complicated, at first they can seem a little bit overwhelming, but once you see how to break them down into their individual pieces, they often become much simpler. This turned into two simple one-dimensional kinematics problems. And so once you understand how to break it into those pieces and tie those pieces together, that allows you to have a much better understanding of things. It allows you to solve much more complex and realistic problems.